Uh, Madam President, uh, last month the American people created 379,000 new jobs across our country. The unemployment rate fell to 6.2 percent. Our economy is recovering. We are actually on our way back to normal. In early February, the Congressional Budget Office published a report on this. The report says that our economy will reach the same size that it was before the pandemic, and it will do it in just a few months. It says this summer, our economy will be back to normal. Now, the CBO made that projection weeks before the Democrats passed and the President signed into law a $1.9 trillion wish list. In other words, our economy would be back to normal even had they never passed the bill. We'd be back to normal without a dime of this incredible high amount of spending. We didn't need the liberal wish list. The country doesn't need it. Yet it's obvious why Democrats rushed, rushed their liberal wish list into law. They wanted to stamp their name on the recovery that was coming no matter what. I have no doubt that that's the goal, yet the truth is clear. This is not President Biden's recovery. President Biden inherited three vaccines, successful vaccines, vaccines that work and are safe. President Biden inherited two million tests a day for coronavirus. President Biden inherited falling coronavirus numbers. He also inherited a recovering economy. Last year, we saw the fastest economic recovery in American history. The unemployment rate fell to by half in six months. The American people created more than 12 million jobs coming back from the pandemic. They did it in just six months. Thus, more jobs than were created in the eight years of the Obama-Biden administration. Now, this was in large part because of the foundation laid by Republicans before the pandemic with President Trump's economic, pro economic uh, programs in the White House. Republicans cut taxes on the middle class, on job creators. We cut regulations, and we cut government red tape. We made a, pr a better trade deal with our neighbors. Our agenda worked. Just before the pandemic hit, the unemployment rate was down to 3.6%. The American people created more than 7 million new jobs under President Trump. We saw record low unemployment for Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, African Americans. We reached the lowest unemployment rate for women in 60 years. When America began to reopen, the success of that agenda helped us recover at a record pace. The economy is also recovering because we're making progress against the virus. With Republicans in the White House and a Republican majority in the United States Senate, we passed more than $4 trillion in coronavirus relief. Unlike the Democrats' relief list, wish list, all five of our bills were bipartisan. They each got 90 votes in the Senate or more. Operation Warp Speed broke records for vaccine development. A new vaccine typically takes about 10 years from the lab to people's arms. The previous record for a vaccine was for mumps. It took four years. Last year, we achieved two coronavirus vaccines in 10 months. We broke records, and it wasn't even close. The Food and Drug Administration made dozens of cuts to regulations in order to make this happen. The Biden administration has not played it straight with the American people about coronavirus. We remember when Vice President Harris said that there was no national strategy, she said, or plan for vaccinations. Madam President, we were delivering millions of doses of vaccines in December. President Biden said, we got into office and there was nothing in the refrigerator. Nothing in the refrigerator. The Biden campaign and now the Biden administration has repeatedly misled the American people on the coronavirus. They've repeatedly taken credit for things for which they deserve no credit. Mark my words, this summer they're going to try to take credit for our recovery. If they do, they'll be flat out wrong. Our recovery was booming under the Republican agenda, and it was agenda of low taxes and fewer regulations. That's the agenda that the American people need to get our economy booming again. Madam President, on, an, on another matter, I also come to the floor to oppose 
what I see as a radical agenda of the Democrats in Congress. It's not even been two months since the Democrats took over the Senate that they've already rolled out one of the most left-wing agendas in American history. They've already spent $1.9 trillion, one trillion with a T, $1.9 trillion of our tax dollars. 26 Democrats have endorsed amnesty for illegal immigrants. Nearly every Democrat has endorsed giving statehood to Washington, D.C. And now Senator Schumer has put gun control on the Senate's to-do list. Democrats have proposed a radical agenda that invades nearly every aspect of American life. Yet the driving force behind this agenda is not the Senate, it is still the House. House Democrats have gone after our First Amendment rights, freedom of religion. They've gone after our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. They've gone after our right to work. When Democrats are in charge, none of our rights are safe. Neither are most cherished institutions. House Democrats have gone after our police, gone after our elections. They lecture Republicans about accepting the results of elections, yet they're trying to overturn an election in Iowa. Now, the lawyer the Democrats have put in charge of that case was just sanctioned in federal court on ethics violations. Yet Speaker Pelosi has made it clear at her press conference on Friday that she supports the effort to overturn the election. It's not all. Democrats aren't just trying to change one election, they're trying to change all of our elections. They passed a bill to change just about every aspect of our elections forever. A recent poll by Harvard shows that 71% of voters say they don't want future elections to be like they were in 2020. Democrats get their way, every election will be a pandemic election. To change our elections, Democrats still need 60 votes in the Senate. That's why over the weekend, Democrat allies at the New York Times endorsed changing the rules of the Senate. The paper explicitly said that that was the reason. The paper attacked members of this body, Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema, who have had the courage to oppose changing the rules of the Senate. The editorial board said, quote, this is a singular moment for American democracy if Democrats are willing to seize it. Madam President, it's dangerous, it's scary, yet it's true. This is a singular moment. Once they rig the Senate, then they can rig our elections. Once they rig our elections, then there will be nothing to stop them. Then they can go after our religious freedoms, they can go after our rights to keep and bear arms, and they can spend as many of our hard-earned tax dollars as they want. This certainly is a singular moment for our democracy. It's a moment for senators on both sides of the aisle to stand up to this radical agenda. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor.